Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Klaus Fielsch, who's the product manager for Metropolitan Touring, based in Quito, Ecuador. And uh, as you'll, as you may have been watching, uh, we've been uh, showcasing Metropolitan Touring and its products. I was on a trip to the Galapagos uh, and other parts of Ecuador, Quito, and then into the Ecuadorian Amazon uh, through Metropolitan Touring uh, for two weeks. Uh, earlier this month, and it was an amazing trip. Now, Klaus is in charge of, obviously, all the product, and so we thought it'd be a good uh, to get him on board to talk about all the things that Metropolitan does and all the things I experienced, and you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Klaus, first of all, how are you and where are you? Well, James, thanks for the uh, interview. And I'm, I'm in Quito. I'm just outside Quito. I'm doing fine. Um, we have lovely weather here, but that's nothing unusual. We don't even We're talk right about that equator. because, as I told you earlier, <laughs> we have snow and sleet coming down right now in New York. And uh, I am wishing I'm back on, on the equator with you in Quito uh, and or even Galapagos because it was a lovely weather there all, all the time. And the, the best thing is the days are the same length all the time. And um, exactly. You know, and I, we were talking earlier, uh, you can use the U.S. dollar. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it was just a fantastic time, and, and I, wish, I wish I could go back. And, well, we, we do have a date to get me back to Mashpi, and I know we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But let's, Absolutely. Let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about the history of Metropolitan Touring. Uh, when did it start, and what did it really focus on, and what is it focused on today? Well, it started in 1953, and it started initially as a sort of travel agency selling plane tickets, but it immediately morphed into a DMC, and it's been an inbound tourism uh, since 1953, so that's almost 70 years. Um, and it also pioneered in Galapagos. You see, 1953, the company started, but 1959, the National Park was created uh, for second time. This time, they thought that it would be uh, sustainable in the long run if mm -hmm nature-oriented people would come and visit Galapagos. People thought it was a crazy idea to have tourists in a national park. But in 1967, uh, a study was made, commissioned by Ecuador, whether it was feasible or not to have tourists in Galapagos, and it, the, the study said yes. Um, and ships, otherwise you would have to have hotels on each island. So it had to be on ships, small groups, escorted by park wardens in designated areas. And then it was possible with a lot of rules so that it wouldn't affect the wildlife. So by uh, 1968, we did the first day trips from Quito to Galapagos with a company that's now extinct with Intraf Travel. And it was a complete success. By 1969, we placed the very first ship in the Galapagos. Wow. When you put a man in the moon, we put a ship in the Galapagos. <laughs> Uh, together with another uh, operator that is, I think, very similar to us, and that's Limblad um, uh, in, in, in 1969. So we've been there. Uh, nobody's been there as long as we've been there, and we've been learning a lot ever since then. No, that that it's a great it's a great company and has a long history in doing this, and it's it's really notable that you were the first to do cruises of the Galapagos and to take tours there, uh, and now you're there in force. And and let's talk an overview as a product manager for Metropolitan Touring. You would really oversee all the products and services. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the company's products quickly, and then we're going to delve directly into some of them directly. Absolutely. We, aside of being a DMC, which means that we have a number of products that are, don't belong to us, but we have a team that looks at each of these hotels, restaurants, uh, whatever service we provide, and we see if they qualify to the same standards on a yearly basis. But the products that we own are three ships in the Galapagos Islands. We have a hotel in the Galapagos Islands. We have a hotel in Quito, in, in, in the heart of the city right. of Quito. We have a hotel outside Quito. And I would just say that although we have three ships, ships uh, in Galapagos and we have three hotels in Ecuador. We, we're building one in, in Colombia. They're in the process of doing a, a one in there. Uh, I don't think we can be considered a shipping company no. or a, a chain hotel because although there are certain things that are consistently found on them, it's not that we replicate a hotel in Quito and in Rainforest and then one in Galapagos. Uh, they have their own uh, personality because of where they are. 
No, absolutely, and I, and and I was lucky enough to experience many of those products there. Let, let's let's focus on directly on the Galapagos cruises. And you said you have three ships. Uh, what are their names and 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 their sizes and things like that? And the other thing is they all kind of sail on a diverse itineraries. I believe I was on the northern. Galapagos cruise, but I could do other ones to come back if I wanted to go to other islands because I only uh, scratched the surface, really. I did some really great islands, don't get me wrong. They were wonderful, uh, but I can go back and see other ones, right? Absolutely. So there's three ships. You should know there's 69 ships in Galapagos that are there all the time, and uh, three of them are ours. Uh, Santa Cruz, too, has 90 passengers, um, that's our largest vessel, but still small in international standards. Then we have a 48 passenger ship called Yacht La Pinta, and then we have a 40 passenger ship called Isabela II, Isabela II. Uh, those are the three ships. And the way I look at it as a, as a product manager is we, we have basically nine vessels in Galapagos because since 2012, the National Park urged that every vessel had to reshuffle, redesign um, uh, their itineraries so that no, two sh- uh, no, no more than six groups would collide at any visiting site. Right. So uh, you couldn't repeat anything within, within two weeks' time. You could go twice to the research station. But basically, you had to design the itineraries. And basically, captains did this. And in our case, we did it. Uh, and I say we, is, I was involved in it, and I was 14 years a guide in the Galapagos. Mm-hmm. So I really got into this, how do I make the itineraries for the right. vessels? And it was quite interesting because uh, I needed to have metrics so I can measure the old itineraries with the new ones and um, uh, itinerary from one vessel with the other and within the other vessels in Galapagos. So I can really come back to Kita and say to my boss, these are the absolute best itineraries. And it's hard to do that because how do you measure an itinerary? Mm-hmm. So we took a few things into, in, into account, and one of them is the wildlife of Galapagos. We strongly believe that if you're, the wildlife of Galapagos is the reason you go there, come with us. And I have arguments to show you that we are doing a good job in that sense. So from all the species of Galapagos, we gave them a numerical value with our guides, with our expedition leaders, and with our our travelers. So uh, this value was based not on how big or how cute or how uh, unique they are, but how much I as a guide can talk about this one species or how much I can talk about this species. There's a couple of really interesting uh, species in Galapagos. There's not so much you can talk about them, except the fact that they're endemic, they're cute, they're interesting. But for the average passenger, it gets boring after a little while. But some others, I can just tell you stories and stories. Oh, and I forgot to tell you this about that species so with that in account we narrowed it down to 15 and we call it the big 15 right. so now with the itineraries you could see how many of the big 15 you can see in our itineraries versus uh, other vessels in fact the three vessels have consistently six night and two four night itineraries and that's how you do uh the two weeks then you start again with the six four and four right the three vessels have the same thing a four itinerary for any of the three uh, ships is very similar in terms of the value of the big 15 so right. there if you're buying this one or that one it's almost irrelevant unless you have a one particular species in mind that you want to find Got it. the six night itinerary in all three vessels because you're buying a couple of extra days or nights uh, you also get more big 15s in in the six night itinerary so if you're paying more you also get to see more and we can show it to you so in in a way after uh, 51 years in galapagos we can say you know, we know that people tend to spend less time in Galapagos, partly because they want to con- combine it with may- maybe Peru and Machu Picchu. And since you're going to be less time, we want to make sure that you also see more species in less time. So we, we have 12 up to 13 big 15s in, in half a week, which is the four night sure. itinerary. Whereas most of the vessels will give you um, 9 to 11 big 15s in a whole week, right? Right. Well, it's it, so, uh, it, it, yeah, it is interesting because I, you know, I was on your Isabella too, and uh, uh, I was, you know, wasn't sure I knew some some of the species I was supposed to be looking for, but you did pretty much cover it. You know, obviously the sea lions were a favorite, and I had an amazing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, snorkeling experience uh, with the sea lions right next to me. Uh, that was pretty amazing, and then of course things like iguanas, land iguanas, sea iguanas marine iguanas and then of course the um uh the the boobies the the red-footed boobies the blue-footed boobies all the different birds and then we would take some time to be looking for some very uh unique ones like obviously the galapagos penguin we spent a little time trying to find and we did 
And then we had an owl in uh, Genovese Island that we, we, we found, we found uh, as well. And that was, uh, but you know, it was, it was extraordinary. I mean, the guides did a great job explaining all the birds we saw uh, in, in Genovese. That was amazing. Uh, and then uh, they did a great job on, on, well, I'll call it James Island. It's San Diego Island, but I, <laughs> it, is, I it is not my island. So I have to talk. It's it your up. island. Uh, but, but, and then things like, uh, you know, amazing, not so much wildlife, but amazing volcanic stuff uh, going on at Bartolome, uh, to Mar- Bartolome yes. Island, who, yes. which is really, if you haven't been there, Bartolome is just, it's like the moon. It's like the moon, but, but better and beautiful viewpoints. And uh, so you, you really did pack it all into a one four day itinerary uh, uh, for, for me. And then at the end, you end up uh, at Santa Cruz and you see the giant, the famous giant tortoises, which yes. everybody kind of, that's the iconic uh, animal of the Galapagos and you can't see them too many other places. So you do a great job that I got to tell you. When we did the itineraries, uh, uh, one thing I always say it proudly because we actually did this is it's like when you write a book or when you an opera, absolute, uh, what's the uh, introduction? What's, what do you see on the first day? What do you see in the middle of the trip? What do you see on the last day? Because these are probably the moments you will remember the most. So with what do you start? This is the intro. You don't want to give right. too much on, at the beginning. And then all of a sudden you go boom. And then you go with this. And what's at the end? Because you will uh, remember that probably forever. And then the activities, because of course people go snorkeling. Some people don't expect to snorkel as much as they will be because we're on the equator. You can snorkel the whole year. Right. Um, and then, of course, being in the water with penguins, with sea lions, with turtles, it's special. So how many snorkeling opportunities do we have? How many uh, kayaking, paddle boarding, right. glass bottom boat uh, outings do we have? And then everybody gets to do it. You don't have to email ahead of time that you want to take certain slots for kayaking because you want to make sure you and your family can do it. You, there's plenty of time for these activities for everyone. Well, it was an amazing experience. And then, of course, at the end of that, uh, you, you we're dropped off at, at Santa Cruz and we stayed at uh, one of your land properties, your, your accommodations, uh, Finch Bay Hotel. Talk a little bit about uh, Finch Bay and, and what, it, what it offers. I do know what it offers is great food, a real chance to relax. And also, that's a place where you can go see the giant tortoises again at the Darwin Center. So it, it really is a wonderful property and it's, it's not that old too. It's been, it's, I guess it's old, but it's been renovated and it's really, it, it really is up to date. It, it looks very modern to me. Yes, yes. It, it, it's old, but it's not old. It, it was actually uh, uh, started in the 70s by a German family. The first settlers that moved in, in, in the 20th century to Galapagos, the Sievers family, they're good friends of ours, and they built a beautiful property right there in front of the beach. This neighborhood where the Germans lived uh, was never connected to the rest of the town, so it's 100% pedestrian. Right. You need a boat for yeah. 400 yards, and then you walk another 400 yards, and then you're there. So it's completely quiet you don't even have bicycles there so that that makes it special as a neighborhood and then around the turn of the uh, millennium we, we we purchased the property and we uh, we constructed it uh, and, and and we changed a few things uh, we turned into to the Finch Bay hotel I always say this is our fourth vessel yeah there's many things that are like the vessel because a, you want to go to Galapagos because of wildlife, the Finch Bay is also an option. It could be an alternative to a vessel, uh, families with children, because you have a beach and we have a swimming pool. That could be amazing. But it could also be because I don't want to have the strictest schedule that you have on a vessel. You probably recall that you had the schedule was oh, like oh, a Swiss six, clock. Six o'clock every morning. On the and, dots. Uh, and, and, and that's why I needed Finch Bay because I need to recover a bit. Exactly. It was, it was a lot more relaxed there and it didn't have to do that. But it was a wonderful you know close closing part of the trip to that point absolutely because it gives you a chance yes you can go see the tortoises at the darwin center yes you can go see other wildlife yes you can go into town uh it, there's actually a fairly large town it's it, it, it's built up it's i think it's twenty thousand inhabitants in all of santa cruz or something i was yeah told. something like that uh, uh but, and we yeah. have our own boat our own yacht i saw that because saw that. for anybody who's staying in hotels there's far more beds in galapos available in hotels although they're only in the three percent of galapos that is not a national park so there's more beds in the small part that's not national park than in here and all of the ships combined Wow. in Galapagos. But very few people could be able to go into the national park on a hotel-based uh, right. uh, vacation. And that is, there's only 12 yachts. 
with a combined capacity of 200 passengers. And we have one that is the C uh, Finch. Oops, sorry. And uh, it's the um, the sea the sea uh, lion for twenty okay. passengers. So there too we have two naturalists, very similar to our ships. Uh, we do the same trails. We go to the Santa Fe, to Bartolome. We go to North Seymour. We go to South Plaza, and you go there. You do the walk, the same trails. You get back on the board. You change clothes. You go snorkeling. You have a meal there, and you come back, and you go back to your yeah, all in one day, right? You can enjoy the hotel. Exactly. All in one day, right? That's great. All yeah. in one day. It's a day, exactly. it's a day trip. Kind of what you started with was day trip but you used to do it from ecuador which i from probably, ecuador. Oh, that, that, would, that would have been an interesting day trip more of a trek uh, you know uh, amazing kind of time when you first started uh, as a company uh yeah. let, let's let's move uh, away from the galapagos because and into a property that i was supposed to experience but unfortunately couldn't uh we had an issue but uh uh, it, it's the Mashpi Lodge, which is one of your newest properties, and and tell us a little bit. About it. This is up in the Cloud Forest. It's it's uh, not. It's actually I think it's part of Quito, but it's it's uh, you know it's about thirty minutes outside Quito, and it, it's you know everything I saw about it, which you know we talked about this. I need to come back and see it. Uh, it, it but tell us a little bit about that and the experience that uh, the, the guests can have there. Well, it's it's it, it's a lodge in a, in a private rainforest dash cloud forest, uh, and yet it has become like an icon for Ecuador. And uh, a lot of Ecuadorians are very proud, and, and and they just love this place. They come back many times because they just think it's 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 a great great experience. Um, and and I have to say this goes back to our experience as a as an operator for nearly seventy years because in the seventies we translated our successful operation of Galapagos to the Amazon. Right, and we had a ship in the Galap in the Amazon, and we did the same thing: small groups led by a naturalist guide on designated trails, very careful about the environment, uh, using the local population as much as possible, uh, with very careful with waste and and, and, yeah. and byproducts and so on. So, with our experience in the Amazon, we did Mashpee, and Mashpee is at um, about three thousand feet of altitude. Mm -hmm. still within the area that is considered Quito. So there's only a three and a half hour drive there. You don't need a plane to go to the Amazon. From the five uh, Amazonian countries, all of them to go to the Amazon, you need a domestic flight. Right. So there's one day that is virtually lost in logistics and getting there and so on. It's certainly worth the trip. Uh, but it, it, getting there and coming back, it, many hours are lost. But getting to Mashpee and coming back, it's a fun drive. We use small vehicles and we drive down to Mashpee and we're dropping from about 9,000 feet where Quito is down to 3,000 feet. So <laughs> there is a considerable decline in altitude, which makes it nice with the weather. No worries about, uh, you know, diseases and none of that or getting altitude sickness. But at that altitude, we're in the upper end of the uh, rainforest, getting very close to the lower border of the cloud forest so it's a transition area we have 400 species of birds in our property that's one fourth of all of the birds of ecuador and ecuador is the fourth or the fifth depending on which book you're looking at richest country on earth with birds so it is just amazing how much you have here and it's a beautiful property but one of the things we learned when we were in the amazon is that people had issues with a couple of things for instance your bed Right. sleeping at night because of the noise of the rainforest, the moisture. You had to have sleeping. We had a, a mosquito nets on top of you. Uh, and it wasn't nice. And then something was there buzzing around you. So your bed, your bathroom, because many lodges in the Amazon, the bathroom it used to be outside. outside. Okay. Yes. Bumping <laughs> reasons, all that. The bathroom. But then you, you see that big fuzzy spider in the corner of your uh, room and you're thinking, is that guy going to come and visit me during the night? So you're a, bit, a little bit apprehensive about the amazing biodiversity inside your room too. And your food. Although you try really hard, some people wonder, how does the kitchen look like at night when everybody goes to sleep? Is there still critters moving about? So you're apprehensive about that too. So in our lodge, we used material to construct the place to completely isolate, not visually because you always see in the rainforest, but it isolates you. When you're in your bed in Mashpee, you could be in a bed in a beautiful hotel in Oslo or in New York or yeah. in Paris, it doesn't matter, uh, because you don't have to worry about your bed, your night 
time quite experienced that there's no moisture or noise or some critters in your room or in your bathroom or uh, and the food is as like a, one of the top restaurants of Quito that's mashed pitu no, then no. you have the amazing rainforest out there I know you go out and, and look into that but I do I've seen photos and and, and we're going to show some photos here uh, is is the rooms you're you're completely in place in, in enclosed in glass uh, in, uh, in your bedroom and just overlooking the, the, the forest. It's just amazing. Uh, and, I, and I said, I, I having I'm not had a chance to go up there, I definitely have to come back and, and, and do that one. But it is really an iconic property. And you, when, did, when did that start? It was... Well, 2012. 2012. So 2012. Had, for yes. about eight, nine years now. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's good. But it, it really has become very quickly a, a must-see uh, a, a place and must must stay place in in Ecuador. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about you. Do actually have a luxury city hotel in the Caso Gangotena, which I was based at for a few days. Uh, beautiful hotel. Uh, it's an old uh, house in in the city. It was a, a mansion, I should say, uh, and it's a Relayan Chateau. Uh, and it really is. It's overlooking uh, this wonderful square. Um, I, I, I took a photo of myself where I'm uh, looking out over the window and, and looking like I'm making a speech because it was election day in Ecuador and I felt I should try to get a, a last chance to, to win, the, win the presidency. I didn't get on the runoff, but, you know, uh, there's another time, I guess, another time. But it is an amazing, amazing hotel and it really is so comfortable uh, and, and it was wonderful to be there. Talk a little bit about that property. Well, that's a property with a lot of history for anybody in Quito, and Quito is a city packed with history. It's the first city to be declared by the UNESCO, the cultural heritage site in the world, together with Warsaw, long before Rome or Paris was Quito. It's a well-preserved old town, and right in the most important square of the city is Casa Angotena, and it goes back to a couple of hundred years when, when, when we were a colony, and that was already a very relevant place in, 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 within the square of San Francisco, where the city was founded by the Belgian um, uh, Franciscan uh, uh, monks. They brought the wheat, they brought the beer, and they started our city. So we're thankful for three good reasons. Um, and it, Casa Gangotena was burned down to a crisp, unfortunately, in a fire last century. And then the family reconstructed the building. But now they made it completely different, a little bit taller, and with a beautiful ornament outside and inside. They call it the Palace Gangotena. Yeah. And it was considered the most beautiful building in the city of Quito for a very long time. So in that place, we built a hotel. And, and one of the things we did is we tried to keep all the uh, aspects of the old times, sort of eclectic beauty, but with all the modern features you would expect in a modern hotel, including the this, this, this structural changes we had to do so this remains a safe property, even mm -hmm. if we have another fire or if we have a, a tremor, we're in the Pacific Belt of fire like California, Mexico, and so on. So that, that was the hotel. But the most important part is perhaps twofold. One is where we are located because I compare it to a property in Machu Picchu where when all the groups have not arrived yet, you're already there. And when right. everybody has left, you are still there. You own the place, the most iconic place in the city of Quito. That makes it very special. And then we, we our challenge was to make this an experience. How do you do it? Galapos is easy because of wildlife takes 99% of the, of, the, of the blame. Must be the same thing. The wildlife is, 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 is predominant. But how do you make a hotel a, an important aspect of your, of your stay in the city? Mm -hmm. More than just the bed where you sleep or where your shower is, where your bathroom is, where your luggage is stored or whatever it is. How do you make it an, an experience? And we did that. So there's a couple activities that all our guests can do at the end of the day free of charge. And um, that is something a lot of people have appreciated because it adds that special uh, experienced with the community or inside the hotel uh, at the end of the day before it's too early for dinner but it's too late to go out and have something formally done within the city so that is Casa Gangotena it's worked fantastic no and indeed from we based in Casa Gangotena I got a chance to do uh, well Ecuador which is equator so uh, there's some places you can go to actually stand on the equator, uh, actually two places, since apparently there was some dispute about whether the original national place was the correct uh, coordinates, and then you have another one, and we went to both. So, you know, we, we didn't want to, you know, play, play favorites. So, uh, you know, so we, and I got great shots of, of me standing on the equator in both places, and it, it's really a great tour, and we were going to do more touring, uh, uh, but, you know, our itinerary got, got changed around, and that's actually one of the things 
uh, I wanted to talk to you about because you really, beyond all these properties, you also uh, do tours around the rest of Ecuador and you have contacts. And when I couldn't go to Mashpee, you set me up with uh, Sacha Lodge, which is in the Ecuadorian Amazon off the Napo River, which is a tributary to the Amazon. Uh, and it was a marvelous experience. Although uh, you were talking about the creepy crawler critters, uh, I did have a tarantula on my my uh, my doorknob uh, at one point, which was a little scary. Uh, but it was the turndown service, so what can I say? You know, I mean, they they arrived yeah. right at the right time. Yeah. But yeah, so talk about some of the other tour uh, products that you offer within Ecuador, such as the Ecuadorian Amazon. <laughs> Well, Ecuador is the gateway to Galapagos. It's the only way you can get to the Galapagos. Even if you have a private uh, plane, you cannot fly directly to Galapagos. You need to stop in Quito, Guayaquil before you go there. Any ship or plane has to do this. So you can uh, make sure that there's no species brought in accidentally to Galapagos. Right. This goes on decades ago. So right now, that's an additional plus in COVID times that yeah. there's only this cul-de-sac, this, this one way from Quito, Guayaquil to the Galapagos. So that keeps Galapagos very much uh, uh, safe and and um, it is a country with a lot of things to offer. It's one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the planet. It's one of the 13 countries where the Equatorial Line crosses. And there's a lot of attributes to this. It's not just a geographical thing. It, it affects a lot of things. Um, we are. It's one of the seven Andean countries. It's one of the five Amazonian countries. It's one of the three countries where the Choco perhaps the most biodiverse rainforest on earth, the rainiest rainforest on earth is where Mashi is. And it's one of the um, uh, three uh, Chukon countries I already, already mentioned. And, oh, and then the Galapagos, of course. It's the only country that has the Galapagos Island. So there's a lot of things you can do here. Um, we offer, for instance, uh, tours in the Andes. We, we, we can tailor right. make them to your interest. Um, and from Quito, uh, Guayaquil or Cuenca within a very short drive. There's tons of things you can do. Indian markets, um, pre-Columbian uh, ruins, um, uh, volcanoes, glaciers, the closest spot to, uh, yeah. to, the, to the sun, the, the furthest away from the middle of the earth. It's not um, Everest, but it's Chimborazo uh, because of the bulging in the equator. Um, and it's waterfalls, rainforest, cloud forest, Paramo, you name it, you find it here. It's sort of like South America in a nutshell. Yeah, it's so all there, all in, in the space. I mean, what are you, the size of, I don't know, what, 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 to, what, what U.S. state? I think you're very small uh, in many. Very small. Places, but so many diverse regions, and it's one of the best reasons to go to Ecuador. And you can uh, put together programs that will give you such diversity uh, to, to find uh, this in addition to Galapagos, which everybody wants to go to, but uh, people should know that there is all this too uh, in 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 uh, just in Ecuador alone. I mean, you, you, to go from Galapagos to the Amazon uh, rainforest was just you know mind blowing in a way uh, because it was so different, and then to be out, have the chance eventually to go to the cloud forest a little higher up, and then Quito itself, and then some of the towns is just. Uh, uh, beyond the pale. Now, now, do you offer tour pro tour programs beyond beyond Ecuador and Galapagos now? Yes, we have our own offices in uh, Peru and we have them in Colombia. Uh, we also tested with other countries in the region, but we thought these three are very, very much compatible right. in, in, in very respect from the cultural to the nature and in terms of times, in terms of flights, in terms of hotel, uh, and, and, and in every respect, these are extremely compatible uh, countries. So, uh, uh, in fact, we are uh, with the plans of building a hotel that are now been holding. Is that, is that in Colombia, right? Yeah. In Colombia. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. That'll be, that's another lodge or something? or that. Uh, yes, it's a lodge. It's a lodge. Why do you think in, that's going to happen? Well, we, we, need, we don't have a crystal ball to see how this pandemic will, 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 will end up developing in the next months. So, um, but it's there. It's, it's, it, 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 is, it is a reality. Okay. Okay. We'll see what happens. That the Colombia is yep. another uh, country I, I've wanted to go to, in addition to Peru. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the pandemic and how it's affected your products and your programs. What have you had to do in order to keep operating, as you have uh, pretty much during this entire pandemic? You were the only uh, Galapagos uh, cruise uh, company uh, to be operating out there. Uh, everyone, every almost everyone else that I saw was 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 shut down. I could see some of the brands just sitting there. Uh, what have, and, and what have you had to do that, and as well as the other products that you offer? What what have, what precautions have you had to take? Well, I think 
the easiest part perhaps was with Galapagos because Galapagos has already a, a lot of restrictions before pandemic times. Right. Um, for instance, uh, in, I don't know how many years ago, there was a case of um, a hoof and mouth disease in Ecuador. So everybody flying to Galapagos had to go through additional uh, stages of uh, disinfecting your footwear and uh, have, you have backpacks and, and all, all of this. So you probably experienced they, they, they spray the aircraft with permethrin on, yeah, on the way I to the Galapagos, uh -huh. like when you go to New Zealand or Australia. So there's only two airlines now that go to Galapagos. It used to be three. Uh, there's so uh, you can't just go with a with a cargo ship or uh, a airplane and land in Galapagos. So this makes Galapagos very much protected uh, before pandemic time. So the things that they did for the pandemic were uh, easier done because they just added to something already existing. And Galapagos has always been this sanctuary destination, as other places in Ecuador like Mashpee. So uh, when you use chemicals, uh, they have to be also environmentally friendly. Uh, the disposal of the masks, they use masks. How we do handle this. We've been doing this for the longest time with the hospital of, um, of, of Santa, Santa Cruz. So the uh, hospital waste hazard is being discarded in the proper way because of the f of, uh, of, um, fragility of, of Galapagos. And so on top of everything that uh, the, the government has done to, to make sure that you have the safety corridor when you arrive in Ecuador, so the pre-arrival requirements, once you're in Ecuador, the places that are now entitled to open again for tourism, uh, all the necessary care that you have to uh, implement. So you have a safety corridor to the go to Galapagos. A lot of Ecuadorians have used their properties in Galapagos and in Mashpee. They need to be tested additionally to right. go into these properties. So you don't, you know that no local will probably bring in the virus. So once in Galapagos, we also had a few things that were beyond what was required. For instance, you experienced the ozone tunnel on yep. the entrance of our hotels and ships. Uh, and, and we do that. At the Casa Gangotana and at the Finch Bay. Uh, so, the ozone tunnel is a little strange to wait there for 50 or actually to be honest with you on the ship uh we had yeah, that yeah, yeah. as well yeah. uh and it and so, you sit there for 15 seconds or something and this uh, is like a, a surgical room right so any staff or anybody entering you know, know that it is being handled correctly we have ultraviolet lights in the filtering systems of the air conditioning we included these these machines that disinfect the cutlery similar to how you disinfect the, the surgical instruments in all of our kitchens so there's a number of things that we did and invested and trained our staff considering the the, the sanctuary destination that is Galapagos none of this should be harming the environment yeah. but also uh, making sure that you feel at ease and people who travel with us say this I was relaxed and my family was relaxed because I noticed that you were never unrelaxed if there's such word <laughs> oh absolutely and even even on on the cruise on Isabella 2 we have a, a, a full doctor who was on board yeah. who every morning when you came down to breakfast gave you the oxygenator test on your finger yeah. and and then uh, you know took your temperature uh, so, you know, he was looking at us every day. So I certainly felt very safe. And I guess that's what you would tell uh, travel advisors and their clients. Uh, you, you can feel safe. Uh, you are taking precautions uh, to prevent the spread. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can, get the, you can get COVID up here just as well as anywhere in the world. But I felt, you know, it's much safer. And despite all the people at home saying, why are you traveling? You're going to get COVID. I said, no, I don't think so here. Uh, it, it's not going to happen as easily as you think. Uh, and having had COVID, I said, I know all about it. So it's like yeah. a crazy situation. But I, I guess you can reassure uh, your guests and travel advisors that this is indeed the case. You will be safe, right? Yes. You, look, you can look at the numbers when Galapagos was completely closed up. You know, nobody flew, no, no ship was going to the Galapagos. And they decided mid-July to reopen Galapagos. And two weeks later, in mid, at the beginning of August, we started. And we've been steadily going on. A couple of other vessels had trips going on Galapagos. But we were consistently going on. I should also say that because it, 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 was, it, was, it was a bold decision to say, well, we're going to operate even if the numbers don't add up and, and right. we're going to lose. And the first trip we did with six passengers. Oh, wow. But our, our partner airline, LATAM, uh, they went with us. They said, look, okay, if you have uh, less guests than uh, what would be profitable to start operations, we will go with those. We will provide the flights to get in and come back and the cargo that needs to go in and needs to go out. So that, that has worked. But since the beginning uh, or since the reopening of Galapagos, um, 
15,050 guests uh, went until December 31st wow. That's to great. Galapagos. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, how, I was gonna ask you how, got sick. how bookings were, but it sounded like, I mean, that's obviously not comparable to what you would normally have, but uh, for to say you took 15,000 is, is pretty good. Not us. I mean, we, we, we had our, our share of that, but people went to okay. Galapagos but, that were not that's locals. Still that's still that's, good. That's, that's, yeah. And I do know travel advisors who have gone, uh, and they come back raring, you know, raring to go back, and they yeah. tell their clients that you can go there now. It's one of those places you can go, and it is a very easy hop to get down to Ecuador. It's only like three hours from uh, Miami. In my case, from New York, I had to go to Miami and then over. Uh, and, and it is in the same time zone as New York. As I said, it's, it's really a very same currency, same currency. We talked about that. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, why not? I mean, it's really, we we're all talking about domestic travel here in the States and really focusing on that. But, you know, Ecuador is pretty much a domestic destination uh, because it's only that a short hop to get down there to see a country that is so diverse and to see some, so such an exotic uh, such exotic islands as the Galapagos, uh, yeah. you can't you can't beat that. I mean, we can't find that here. So and it's, it's not mass tourism. That mm-hmm. is very important to point out. See, in nineteen, I mean, in twenty eighteen, we had the largest number of visitors going to the Galapagos. That was two hundred and seventy six thousand people went to Galapagos. Right. Um, about um, four fifths of that, or okay, let's say three fourths of that did not go on ships, so they stayed on the 3% of Galapagos that is not a national park. But that's still 210,000 people is not so much. How many people went into the national park, which is the big part of Galapagos? 19 islands and and 8,000 square kilometers. It's huge. And um, about 70,000 people went into the national park in one year. And bear in mind that Venice gets 66,000 people in one day on a normal year. And they're complaining about it. Mass we were tourism. all talking about over tourism uh, not too long ago. <laughs> Although, boy, I tell you, and maybe not right now because I think people are starting to go back to Venice. But uh, that was probably a decent time to go to Venice if you could get there last year. Uh, but in your case, also, it's a great time to go to all your destinations because uh, even though you don't have mass tourism, you're going to have you know right now even fewer people. I mean, I think our ship was a little over half full. Uh, uh, by design or not. And, and that was, you know, we all had lots of time to talk with the guides. We have lots of time to uh, interact with our fellow passengers. There really wasn't that many people on board. Uh, ditto for, you know, staying at the, the uh, Castle Gangatena and also the, the Finch Bay. Uh, there were people there, no question about it, but it wasn't like incredibly crowded. So this is actually a pretty good time uh, to go. And I hope you do get more bookings because clearly uh, you, can, you can take them. It's not like uh, there's going to be any overcrowding right now, but oh, maybe after this, everybody will go. So you better be careful. Uh, we'll see what happens now. Have you introduced any new programs or products? I know it's been a difficult year for 2021, or do you have something on the outlook for 2022? Well, 2021, uh, we, uh, we start with a new itinerary for Isabela II. Uh, that's an enhanced itinerary. We've been working this many years in the past, and it was ready for this year to start, and we're going to do it. Uh, so it's still on the six-night, four-night, four-night, but we even boosted up the uh, yield of, uh, of Big 15s. And we did this because we have a lot of people who combine ships with a hotel. Right. So in this way, you wouldn't have perhaps a species that you see in the hotel that you have already seen in, in, on, the, on the ship and so on. So that's going on. Uh, the other thing is we have um, um, the docks of our ships. Our ships will be run this year as we already did the Isabela II. Despite the pandemic that is halting everything, we keep up with the, all of our scheduled uh, docks. So uh, the, the, the uh, upgrades of the interiors and all that is, yeah is still happening and then of course we're going to wait for the next few months to see what uh, how it unfolds uh, Guayabero is going to happen we don't know exactly when we will start everything again but um, that's there and we're looking also at possibilities in other countries uh, where we are present to see if we can have something uh, like this where we can rep- replicate the same standards but with whatever is needed for that precise location no, absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to that. I know it's been a, a challenging year in 2020. Uh, 2021 is going to be a somewhat challenging year, year. We're hearing major cruise lines probably won't start till the summer, only in a limited basis, uh, and then probably won't get back to whatever normal is these days yeah. until 
um, beginning of next year, end of this year. So we'll see what happens. We are getting the vaccine. Uh, I mean, we're, we're getting good news right now that infection levels are going down in the U.S. Uh, just finally. Uh, but, you know, it's yeah. going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. So we'll see what happens. Now, uh, how should travel advisors, what should they know about working with Metropolitan Touring today? Uh, and what kind of clients should they target for your tour and cruise products? Well, what they should know is Galapagos is not an easy destination. You sell the whole world, but Galapagos has a lot of uh, uh, difficult things, you know. So uh, instead of trying to really become an expert here, but you still need to be an expert of the rest of the world, we know this. We've been doing this for the longest time, and we can be on your side in terms of making things easier, uh, of, of, of being able to answer your clients' uh, questions and uh, and concerns and, and so on. So make it easy. The Galapos part, how do you choose? How do you come down to exactly what is ideal for your guests, whether right. it should be this property, this length, this combination um, within the region too, whether with Ecuador or Peru and Colombia. So don't need to become an expert. We can, we can help you out with that. Who is the, we don't have a profile, a specific profile because Galapagos will be uh, the magnet for anyone. Everybody yeah. will come. You're, you're, you're uh, absolutely this, right. I mean, in our, our cruise, even on, with the limited number of people on board, we had everything from a, a French family with two 12 year old twins who just loved snorkeling and being with the sea lions to uh, a, a family of four who were a little older uh, the, the father was probably in his 70s, but was perfectly happy going out to the snorkeling. So it's not really, a, it's got, I guess it's more of a psychographic than a demographic in terms of your, your, your desire to see uh, these wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful wildlife and all the, the 15 that you talked about. And, and if you want to do that, this is the place to do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If your wildlife is, wildlife is relevant for you, nature, the geology, the volcanoes, the oceanography. Why did Darwin fall in love with this place? Why did it mean yeah. so much for him for his uh, later books and so on? What made it so special? Then come with us. Yeah, no, in fact, we did have a lecture on Darwin on board the Isabella too. And then we, of course, went to the Dar Darwin Center uh, on uh, Santa Cruz, which was fascinating. It's actually one of the best places to see the giant tortoises. Uh, uh, there was another place too we went to, but it really is amazing. But you were talking about, you know, how to, how to manage a trip to Ecuador. And now, of course, these days it, it, it involves COVID-19 uh, uh, precautions. And, and I think over, in total, I've had four COVID-19 tests. Uh, it, it's not terrible. It works. Uh, you, you, your company set up, I mean, I had to have a COVID test to get into Ecuador, but then once we got it, uh, I, I had another one to get into the Galapagos because they demanded a shorter window and, and you set up the, the COVID test and it, it, they came and they did it and it was processed within half a day, uh, which was amazing. And then on the return, of course, because to get back in the United States, we had to do COVID tests. And so uh, they came to the hotel, they did it. Uh, it, was, it was about an hour late. I got a little nervous, but hey, it came through. It was great. And so I would actually, but actually, you know, as I told you earlier, I said, if, if the, it did not come through and I couldn't get my flight, it's not the worst thing in the world to stay another day in Ecuador. So I think I could have been fine with that. And then, of course, when I came home, I had to have a test here because New York State demands that. So it, it is something that you can help with as a company to uh, uh, get all that and, and all the precautions because every these days it's so uh, difficult to figure out all the process and procedures and requirements and protocols that you have to go through. But I think it's, if you work with a company like yours, you're going to find out uh, very quickly, you guys know what you're doing, right? Yes, absolutely. We work with a number of laboratories here, so we can see which one's the most reliable in terms of the delivery. They're all approved, so the, the test result is not going to change. But uh, to make it simpler for you, so we'd find the right moment when it, it needs to be done. If you cannot make Galapagos with the first test that uh, is required to come into Ecuador, because one is 10 days window and the other one is a four-day window. So right. if you were within that four, you with the same test, you could still make it to right. Galapagos. But you should also know that every person locally going to the Galapagos is being tested or every local going to Mashpi has to be tested too. So you know that there's no little loopholes there in, in, in our system. 
Right. In fact, we had we had a, we had a rehearsal because there was like what seemed to be a false uh, positive of a person who had already been on board of the vessel. So we had to apply all of our protocols on one of the vessels. So it was halted and 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 everything went through. So we even done that, which ended up being a, a, a rehearsal because it, it was a, apparently a, a false positive of somebody who had already been in Galapagos but, okay. but tested positive before returning to the country. So um, we've been there, we've done it, we've tested it, we've run it, and we know how to do it. Well, as a product manager, I'm sure this has been a challenging year for you to figure out all the ins and outs to make sure that people could you could access your products and services in a safe and healthy way. But I think you do it very well. So I, I felt not, no no reason for, you know, I wasn't fearful about the whole situation. And in fact, I have a lot of my travel advisor friends are seeing my photos now and saying, I can do that. Uh, so they're, they're ready to go. Now, where can uh, travel advisors go to get more information about Metropolitan Touring and its products? I assume the website, right? The website, yes, metropolitan-touring.com. There's also a 1-800 number. They can reach us. Um, and um, we are within a very short time. You would get a reply from us if it's not uh, immediate. Um, we, you, you get the reply and you get the information. And you would find that Galapagos is challenging, but uh, we can make your life a lot easier. Well, Klaus, I want to thank you for taking the time. And uh, thank, thank you for that drink in Quito. When I saw you there briefly, uh, we decided to do this as a Zoom interview. Uh, but uh, it was a marvelous trip. And I know you had a hand in putting it all together. And, and it was my first time. Uh, it, it won't be my last, I hope. Uh, it, it, it's just such a wonderful destination, so easy to get to. And I want to thank you for all your help and hospitality while I was down there. What a pleasure, James, to meet you. And uh, next time you come, remember, we have a couple of things on the list. We do. We do. We talked about that. So we'll work on that. Definitely. Anyway, I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>